Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about senior developers. So let's get into it. So the question question was, hi Frederick, what truly makes a senior software developer? Well, in a word, experience. But it's not the whole it's not a very good answer because the experience is something that even the really bad senior developers have. Let me explain that a little bit. So the thing that some people don't understand, at least from my perspective about senior developers, is that there are different qualities of senior software developers, but they all have this common trait, which is experience. And that is the thing that makes you a senior. It doesn't matter how good you are. There are junior developers who, has, who are masters of software engineering and they're really good at writing code, but that doesn't make them senior developers. And the simple truth is that a real senior developer is someone who has the experience and the wisdom to make good decisions on behalf of a software project. I'll give you an example of what, what, will, what goes through the mind of a junior level developer and a senior level developer. I actually have a concrete case where a junior coworker came up to me and asked and suggested and told me that we should start using I think it was Nest EAS. And this person said, you know, maybe you don't know about this, Frederick, because it's kind of new. And I go, well, uh, I'm not that old and I wouldn't really call myself a senior. But in this context, I'm the senior developer. I'm the more experienced one. And he says, oh, well, you know that this like uh, you, you like to do this thing where you create like these uh, this file where you just instantiate all of your different services and uh, then you just ref reference to that module and uh, then you have your service layer. But you know Nest.js can do that for you. You can just use an annotation and then you can have dependency injection auto uh, like, uh, automatically. Why, don't we, why aren't we doing that? That's much, much more convenient. And so I explained and I said that, well, it's simple because I want to keep the code as simple as possible because the solution that Nest.js is giving you is actually not adding any value. It's really only giving you, you it's trading you having to r instantiate a class or a service of some sort, which is one line of code in one file. And instead, it's giving you an annotation that is not natively supported to start off with, uh, doing the exact, just doing that for you. And if you want to have dependencies on that service, you actually have to add other annotations in other places in order to inject these things. Uh, and from my perspective, the most important thing is to keep this, uh, keep the solution as, as clean and simple as possible. Now the junior said, okay, that's fair enough, but uh, I still think that you should consider this. And I go, well, if you think about it, the Nest.js solution, well, if you're going to have this solution, well, then we're gonna have to migrate from Express, which is the thing that we're using, over to Nest to get, again, that's gonna take time. It's gonna take a lot of time. And the only thing apart like, that we're right now looking at is dependency injection and the time it takes you to write the code that nest is going to give you is literally seconds it takes you seconds to do this and when you have everything in one single file like this you actually are in a position where you never have to fear circular dependencies you never have to fear uh, one of the most pro problematic things with object-oriented programming which is that you need to instantiate things in a kind of spider web situation because you can always trust that as long as all, everything exists in the same dependency file you can always position your instantiation of different objects in the correct order so that you never get to a position where you get a circle dependency or you get a problem with spider web uh, instantiation of different services and it works with every stack so I ask you what is the benefit that you're getting from using Nest? And the junior couldn't really answer that. And the thing is here, the reason why at least I, I knew that 
this I, I knew that the junior would not have an answer to this is because the junior is has not gone through the pain of picking a like an entire stack of uh, frameworks or something like that based on maybe one or two perks and then have to having to deal with the all the fallout that comes from maintaining that over time if you are a experienced developer you will know that insert uh, that as a rule it's much better for you to pick the thing that is going to be the absolute simplest thing and ideally the thing that doesn't lock you down all that much into specific tools or anything like that because as long as, as soon as you lock yourself into a tool suite and something else comes along such as a new tool or a new requirement that forces you to change the way you do certain things well if you have as I as I was trying to explain with my implement the, the suggestion that I made that implementation is just raw it's normal JavaScript it doesn't cost you anything there it's it will it will work up to a scale of Google it, it's always going to work and you can always change that code because it's the base layer you have nothing on top that is locking you down from making any decision and that is extremely powerful because often you will find that you get into these situations where now you need to tweak something you need to do something new and the tool that you have picked that has made a decision on your behalf such as with dependency injection it doesn't have to be nest it can be any other tool right has now locked you in place so if you're going to accept that lockdown, you need to be sure that the benefit that you're getting is high enough so that it's worth it or that this thing is at the very least so stable that you're never going to get into that position because it's really shitty and it happens quite a lot when you bet on the wrong tool or the wrong thing and it turns out later that wow this is no longer going to work for us and now you're so invested in that thing that the cost of you migrating or changing it is so high that you just need to hack it together and the code is actually going to get really shitty because of that choice now this has nothing to do with talent that that decision i hope that you this is clear to you this uh, this entire conversation it's n there was nothing in there which clearly showed that oh i am the exp like i'm the good developer and that person is the bad developer the only thing that you should uh, should fo uh, should have read into that is that one person has gone through the pain of making a decision based on in this case one specific feature in the tool suite and the other person is more is more focused on the relevancy of the tool and how to to a certain degree at the very least improve the workflow which is a very noble it's a noble intention but the person who has a lot of experience can actually say that in this case that's probably not a good trade-off because they have seen enough to know how that's very likely to turn out further down the road and that is what a senior developer is about or a more experienced developer should be about like the really true seniors the people who are like a lot more experienced than i am it's the same process my senior coworkers are people who have been doing things that are new to me just as, as to a junior coworker, I've done some stuff that they haven't, and that is the entire idea of being a senior developer. That is what makes you a senior. It makes you a senior developer to have gathered the experience and reflected on it enough so that you can make good informed decisions before they turn into something bad or something like that. That's all it comes down to. You have been around the block, seen the world, and now you know enough to guide decisions in the right direction. So what I want you to take away from this is that from my perspective what makes a true senior is their experience and wisdom in making technical decisions. They, have, they are not necessarily the people who are going to write the best code all the time or they're not necessarily the people who are going to impress you. They are the people who will be able to say before you, before you even start working that this is probably a good we should do this or we should do that and I know that because I've done things like this before many many times and these are the learnings that I have gathered from doing that that is what the senior is about and the more senior you are and the better you are as of a senior the more complicated things you will be able to answer before you even bet on them the people who work at like uh, CTO levels and like or like leading entire companies 
their seniority is about leading companies. They have been doing all of this stuff so much that they know that, oh, you need to budget something like this, or you need to talk to these people, you should get those stakeholders in line, and like they can, sh they can take charge and they can lead entire companies or entire departments in the right direction. That is what seniority is about. It's just down to good experiences and being able to make the good, uh, make the right decisions at any given moment. That is what a true senior is about. Have a great day.